Hi, I'm Margaret and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today we're going to be working on block number 21 of Moda Fabrics Stitch Pink for 2020. Stitch Pink is a quilt along that Moda Fabrics is sponsoring in recognition of breast cancer. I'm making two separate quilts. I'm making one for breast cancer awareness and the second one I'm making is for melanoma awareness. This is the block that we're going to be making today and it's called Celebrity. I made a lot of changes on how we're going to put this one together. So um, let's go over it slowly and carefully first and then we'll get into starting to put it together. One of the things that I did was these four corner blocks, they had these being done as simple triangles being put together. I opted to do them in half square triangles. I just felt like it was a little much making all of those half square triangles out of two pieces of fabric. So instead what I'm doing is I increase the size of it to three and a quarter inches. Okay, so that's a big thing. So on, let's see, what one is it? E, you're going to do five blocks at three and a quarter inches and you'll need five blocks of the white at three and a quarter inches. Then what I'm doing is drawing a line diagonally from corner to corner and then what will happen is I will make two of these at a time. So here's my pink ones. I got a couple more to grab. Sorry about that. I thought I had all of them ready for you and obviously I didn't. So again, just drawing a diagonal line from corner to corner. We have increased it enough that we will need to square this up which is good news because that's what we want to do is we want to be squaring things up as we go. It will make your block go together a lot, lot nicer. So here we go. There's those. Here, this one goes here. One more to do. Then the other change that I made was on the very inside in the center of the quilt right here there were again two half square triangles. This is for the pink quilt, this is for the black quilt. So what I did with pieces E and F, I also cut those at three and a quarter inches. All right. I will indicate the changes that I made in the cutting on this one because there's a lot of them in the show notes below. So you'll be able to expand those and take a look at them. The only other thing that I changed the size of were the H and the E's. I increased those also by an eighth of an inch just to give me a little bit of wiggle room so that I could square them up. We've made quite a few flying geese already. That's what I'll be doing with these. So my very first steps of what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making my half square triangles. So it's these in these pieces. That's what I'm going to start with. Then once I get those half square triangles made and squared up, then I'll show you the next step that I'm going to take. I made all my half square triangles and what I did was I put the two pieces together, drew a diagonal line, so a quarter of an inch away from each side of that line. So I'm going to set these aside for right now because what we're going to concentrate on is what goes right here in the center first. All right. These are supposed to square up to two inches. All right. We're going to make a total of two of these. So two in this color and two in this color. Dark reds and whites, which are right here, but we're going to hold off on those because those are actually on the outside. And I'm going to go through that with you when we get to that point. So what we're concentrating on right now is making two with the two different colors. All right. We're going to square those up. And how we're going to square those up is we're going to take our ruler. I use creative grids and you can see I'm plenty big enough because I only need to be two inches, but that's okay. I'd rather be big 
and square it up than be not big enough and have to redo it. So I'm going to square these up to two inches. And again, I'm just following my diagonal line. So this is what we're concentrating on. I have my first one at two inches. I'm going to set that right there. And then my second one. And this one, let me double check my picture, looks like it goes like this, right? Yep, yeah. goes like that. So now I'll also do my black ones. So let's put these together just like this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add these two pieces together in these two pieces together and then sew it into a four patch. My four patch needs to square up at three and a half. So I'll be back to square up my four patch. Here are both of my blocks. I'm going to square them up. The block has got to be three and a half inches square. So half of three and a half is one and three quarters. So I'm going to move my ruler so that the one and three quarters is right there in the center. And I'm just going to twist it until I can see that I'm just about totally square. So my line going across here is straight and my line going up and down is straight. And remember, I'm at one and three quarters. So now I'm just gonna shave it off at the top and the bottom and look at, this is all we're getting, but believe me, that adds up. So I'm gonna twist it around, turn it around. I got a little fuzz there. And I'm going to do it again. This time I'm lining also up at three and a half. I'm lining up at one and three quarters and at three and a half. And again, I'm just going to go through and square it up. So now my two center pieces are all done and ready to go in the center. So I'm going to set them back on my board in the way that they go. And they go like this. All right. The next thing that I'm going to do is put my flying geese together. Now remember, we do one side on all of them, press them, and oh, by the way, I did press these open. Then we do the other side, press those, then we square it up. And I'll come back and show you how I square it up. I've squared up some of our flying geese. These square up to two inches by three and a half. So as I always do it, I take and put my flying geese in that direction and I use my 45 degree line. Half of three and a half is one and three quarters. So I line up my one and three quarters at the point. I double check to make sure that I'm straight going this way, that I've got the full two inches this way, and I do double check to see where I'm at down here. I wanna make sure that I've got enough room so that at three and a half when it squares up, I'm gonna be close to that point. So I just go up and across, clean up this, flip it, and do it again. And that's really all there is to squaring these up. Because I made my wings, the geese wings, a little bit larger, I actually have something to square up. Because lots of times with flying geese, if they're made the exact size, you can't square them up. And I sew pretty straight, but that obviously is not as squared up geese. You can tell it's not. There's nothing nice and square about it. So I like to increase the size of mine so that I can make sure that I've got a nice square geese. Now if you want to do it this way, you can't. What you're going to do is the exact same thing. You're going to go to one and three quarters on your ruler and what you're going to do is line that up right across the very top of the point of your geese and then what you need to do is just do your best in making certain that it's nice and square then what you can do whoops I was at two and three quarters good thing I double checked 
then what you can do, make sure that you're square, you're at the one and three quarters, going across here, you're going to double check here and here to make sure that you're pretty lined up, and I am, and then I can just go up and across. I do prefer to do it with this method, starting out this way using my 45, because I feel like I've got a little bit more to go by to make sure that I'm get, getting it straight. So that's why I like to use the 45 degree. So there's my second one, two more to go. And then we can move on to the next stage, which will be putting this entire center of this block together. So that's what I will be doing next according to these directions. I went a little backwards. I did the absolute inside center first, and they did this part that we're doing right now first. So I did switch it up just a little bit, but that's... I do that sometimes because I feel more comfortable doing it sometimes in different orders than what the directions tell me. So I'm just squaring this up nice and then um, I will move on to the next. Which is what I'm ready to do now. So I'm going to take these and I am going to make this inside of our block. This is all done. I'll add two of the geese, one on each side, and then I'll put these strips together so that I can make my six and a half inch block. And I'll be back with that to show you how I square that one up. We have made our center square. So where we are at is we have made this part right here. So just this little part. So the next thing that I'm going to do, remember these, Half square triangles are made. I just need to square those up. So the next thing I'm going to do is work at G and H flying geese. All right. But first we have to square this up. I've already done this one. So now we're going to do the pink. And this one's going to square up to six and a half inches. So I'm taking my creative grids ruler, which on one side of it is the halves. So in the black are all of the halves. In the white are all of the whole numbers. Now this is the first time I've shown you guys how to use the half mark on the creative grids. Remember how we've always used half for our measurement for our center? Well, it's no different here. So what we're going to do right here at this point would be three and a half. So right there is three and one quarter. Half of six and a half is three and one quarter. So I'm just going to scooch that right to the three and one quarter mark, making certain that I am straight all the way across, and I am. And I'm going to go up one side and across the top, clean up my little mess, and see there's barely any threads on these. So it's very important that when you're sewing, you sew a scant quarter of an inch, and if you don't know what a scant is, lots of times on your sewing machine, you can move your needle to the left or to the right. So you would move your needle one click to the right. All right, so I'm gonna rotate this and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take this to the three and a quarter mark, which is right there, lining up right straight across. And I can also see the line up there and I'm just going to go up one side and across the top, and that's it. I'm squared up. There was nothing extra there at all. So as I said, my next move is I'm going to make my large flying geese, and then we're going to start putting together this outside. So ignore this center because that's all done. We're going to start putting this together. And then we can put the entire block together. So we're almost done. All right, we're now working on squaring up our large outside flying geese. So these right here. Okay. Whoop, sorry. So these right here. These are to be squared up to three and a half by six and a half. So three and a half by six and a half. I'm going to take my creative grids ruler and this time I'm going to go back to using the whole numbers and I'll show you why in just a second. 
because I get questions a lot of times why I don't use the half increments on the Creative Goods rulers, and I tend to use the whole increments. So here I am at three and a quarter, and I'm all lined up. I'm going to square across there and then across the top. Clean this up, and I'm going to turn it. And this is why I tend to use the whole. Here we are at the six and a half, and now we're at the three and a half at the bottom. So six and three. See right here, I've got my quarter inch mark. So I can make sure I've got that quarter of an inch that I need for a seam allowance. That is why I tend to use the whole increment side and not the half increment side when I'm squaring up. I like the fact that I can see and make sure that I've got that quarter of an inch that I need for my seam allowance. I like to know that I'm not going to cut my seam off or my points off when I go to put the block together. And it truly does help me. It's something that I do use quite often. So I like to do it that way. So now I'm just going to do it three and a half by six and a half. Double check and make sure I still have my quarter. And I do. And now I can square it up again. Okay. I'm going to do the rest of these off camera. And then I will be back to... Well, let me grab this. We've got these. Remember the other set of half square triangles that we made at the very beginning? E and D, these need to square up to two inches. So don't forget to square those up and then you'll be ready to put your block together. So I'll be back once I get all of this all squared. This is stitch pink block number 21 that is called Celebrity. So you're going to complete these four corners exactly how I completed this. The flying geese, just please make sure that you stop, take a minute, and get them squared up. It's really important that you do. Otherwise, you could run into trouble later on. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward of a block. It's not difficult to put together. The only thing that I would say is off a little bit is I did increase the sizes on a bunch of them. And I'll leave what I increased down in the show notes so that you can get it. But I definitely did increase some of the sizes so that I didn't have any issues with putting it together. And I stopped and squared it up, which you have already seen that I did that. So here is the end of block number 21. I will see you tomorrow for block number 22. So if you like these videos, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my channel. And please feel free to share my channel with your friends. Thank you so much for being a part and I will see you again really soon. Bye. <music>